functions tables. Equations, math phrase with an equal sign. Function tables then are the new thing. So today we're going to look at tables that give us an input. We, when we put in something, what do we get out? So you, that's what you have seen before. They're also called sometimes ratio tables. So let's look at this first one. I want you to write the word solution. Solution then is an answer. So we're going to find out if, a, if we're given a solution, is it the answer to an equation? So I want you to write these words. Given a number, is it the solution to the equation? That is the directions you're going to see. So the first equation, 7x plus 4 equals 32. When you're given x, which is 4, is 4 a solution to this? Well, let's plug it in and see. So 7 times 4 plus 4, does that give me 32? 7 times 4 is 28, plus 4 is that 32. Well, 28 plus 4 is 32, so 32 equals 32. So yes, 4 is a solution to this equation. You're going to show it through using your PEMDAS just like yesterday. So let's look at the next one. One third times x, because remember there's nothing between that, plus 5 equals 16. So let's plug it in when x is 18. Now I know this is where you may have the issue, so let's look at this first because we must multiply first. Remember, 18 is 18 over 1. So now I must simplify before I multiply or I can multiply straight across, but I want to simplify first. I can't simplify this way, can't this way, so I want to look across. 3 goes into 3 once, 3 goes into 18 6 times. 1 times 6 is 6, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 5 equals 16. Well really this is just 6 plus 5 equals 16. Well 6 plus 5 is 11. Does 11 equal 16? No. The answer to this is no. 18 is not a solution for this equation. All right, let's look at what we're going to do next. Pretend you have a machine. You can put any number or input into the machine. The machine provides or performs an operation on the number and provides a result or an output. So let's first get what a function is. A function is a rule. That's what I want you to write. But what it does, it assigns one output to the input. When I have you make tables in your notebook, you just need to make them like this. You don't need to draw the whole chart and just write in on one side, out on the other. So in this case, the rule is to subtract 2, or the function is to subtract 2. So if I put in 4 and I subtract 2, I would get 2. If I put in 9 and subtract 2, I would get 7. So go ahead and finish the last two. You should have 10. 13 minus 2 would be 11. There's your input output for your function table. So we're going to do a little game here and we're going to let the computer do it. Here it comes. All right. So let's look at, let's let the computer decide on the first one. The computer puts in 20 and out pops 10. So if you go from a bigger number to a smaller number, you're either going to subtract or divide. So in this case, I have two options. I could either subtract 10 or divide by 2. We're going to need another number to check each one. 2. 1. Well, if I take 2 minus 10, I'm going to get a negative. So it must be divide by 2. And we are correct. The function or the rule for this would be to divide by 2. Let's try another one. In goes 9. Out comes 0. Ooh, we could either subtract 9 or we divide by anything to get 0. So the computer pick another number. It was subtract 9. Or subtract, yeah, 9. Do one more. 
In goes 21 and out comes 42. So now I'm going from a smaller number to a bigger number so I could either times 2 and get 42 or I could add 21 to get 42. Just put in the next number and see what happens. Get 58. Well, if I take 29 plus 21, I would get 50. So 29 would have to be times 2 to get 58. You just created the function or the rule for this. So let's look at the next writing a rule. All right, so let's just do this first one. So you're going to make again your quick in out box. Remember, just uh, make your line and go in and out. So we don't know what's happening on the first one, so we're going to skip it. But we put in a 9 and out came a 13. We put in a 12 and out came a 16. We put in a 15 and out came a 19. Well, I didn't multiply by anything to get 13, so I have to add. And each one I'd add by 4. So don't forget to fill in the output that's empty for you, and then you'd add 4. This can be written this way as it can be written this way. These are both tables. Either way is right. What's cool about these tables is most of the time this is known as your x, and this is known as your y. So here I want you to write x is known as your input. That's why we use x and y a lot in algebra. And y is known as your output. All right, so let's complete this function table. We are now that we know how to write the rules, we're giving the rule. And we got to plug in 0. So I'm just going to go to the side and say 2 times 0 minus 1. Well, 2 times 0 is 0 minus 1. This is a tricky one because we don't do this much yet, but that'd be a negative 1. So let's do another one. 2 times 1 minus 1. 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is 1. So I want you to try these. Go ahead and plug them in. Two times two is four. Minus one is five. Now minus one is three. Two times three is six. Minus one is five. You'll also start to notice a pattern. If these go up by one each time, you can notice a pattern over here. This one up by two. So if I want to do four, this would just go be 7. If I wanted to do 5, this would just go up by 2 and be 9. Now it works only for that rule. Last thing, you're going to write a rule and an equation. So let's look at what's happening here. What do you notice is happening? Well, this one's going 4 times smaller. This one's going 4 times. So this would be 3. 7, the rule would be minus 4. So here's what's cool and why we use these. If this is the input, this is what I'm starting with, and this is my answer. So basically, I just bring the rule down and say I'm taking x minus 4 equals y. And there's my equation, x minus 4 equals y. Whatever I put in for the x is my input. I'm subtracting by 4 to getting my y. All right, you can get started on your homework.